The features we enjoy the most in a new release are any that give us a brand new look or enhance an old look we enjoyed playing around with. Well, After Effects CS 5.5 delivers several of those. For one, 3D lights now have a fall-off parameter, the ability to change the amount of illumination over distance. I'll be showing that later on in this movie. Also, 3D cameras have a greatly enhanced depth of field effect. The iris simulations are beautiful now, and I'll be showing that in the next movie. There's a handful of new utilities, including ones that make it easier to set up the focal plane for depth of field, and a nice little orbit camera rig, and I'll be giving those a workout. And finally, there's a new 2D effect, Camera Lens Blur, that simulates the nice iris effects that are in the 3D cameras, and I'll be showing that as well. Lots of stuff to cover, let's jump in. For those who have our book Creating Motion Graphics for CS5, I'm in Chapter 15's example project on lighting, and I've opened up the comp EX10 Starter. The reason I've chosen this is it already has a lot of layers placed at different positions in Z, distance from the camera and distance from the light in 3D space. And in fact, I'll switch my view from active camera to top and go ahead and pick up some of these layers and move them even a wider variety of distances from the light and camera. Forward, bring this forward as well. Fill in the in-between space. Maybe push some of these further back. Now I have a nice assortment. I'll go back to Active Camera. I'll select our light and type AA. Two A's in quick succession, which reveals the 3D specific parameters of any layer. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the cone angle and decrease the shadow darkness for now. And that way I'm relying just on the light's illumination rather than shadows to alter the illumination of each layer. You'll now notice that we have a new pop-up called Fall Off. Right now it's set to None, which is the way lights used to work in After Effects, but there's two new choices, Smooth and Inverse Square Clamped. Now this may sound like a very technical name, but this is actually the way lights really work. The further you get away from the light source, the weaker it is following a square law. So I'm going to pick that for starters. In this case, the radius basically sets how large the light source is. It starts falling off at the end of the light's radius. If I was to take this all the way down to a point light, where it's just a very tiny light, I get very little illumination because the light's so small and its strength is falling off, I can increase intensity to go ahead and get some illumination back in my scene. But you can see that intensity falls off very quickly. I'll undo and increase the radius, the size of my light, to the point where it just nicely kisses that first layer. I've got a nice illumination there, and then it falls off nicely for all the rest of the layers following the inverse square law. I'll go ahead and increase the size of light if I want to, outside of the realm of reality, but it might help light the scene to my taste. The alternative to inverse square is just smooth, rather than following a square law fall off from the radius to the point where there's no illumination, you actually get to set the inner radius and basically the outer radius, the fall off distance. Fall off distance is added to the radius to decide the extent of this light's throw. That way you could have a light end artificially early if there's layers you don't want to illuminate with this particular light. For example, I can go ahead and increase it to illuminate my layers behind, or decrease it to really focus just on, say, one layer. And you see where I get extreme? It's almost like a light's cone where I get a really hard fall off for that circle of light. I'll scrub this, and you'll see my light basically shrinks to the point where no one's illuminated. Or I can increase the fall off distance, which is almost a feather in this point, to go ahead and illuminate the rest of my layers. Even though smooth is not technically accurate. It doesn't follow the laws of physics properly. So far, I prefer it for motion graphics design because it gives me a little bit more intuitive of a feel and more control over who's getting illuminated and who's not. I can pick up the back of my light, move it around, have some fun, play around with my intensity as before, and then really tweak who's getting illuminated by how much by playing with the radius and fall off distance. Maybe I want to illuminate the first few layers fully, and then have it fall off pretty sharply after that. A lot of control. And that's what I like in general about 3D and After Effects from a motion graphics perspective. It does give you a lot of control over how your layers appear. Some of these choices may not be accurate from a physics point of view, 
But this is design and eye candy as far as I'm concerned. I like having the choices. That said, the new feature I'm going to discuss in the next movie is based on physics, how the iris of the camera really works, and how you can recreate those looks inside After Effects.